for number 16 and number 17, we are also going to be using the substitution method. So we're going to let u equal the most complicated part of the expression. And I would say that our denominator here is the most complicated part. So we'll let u equal x cubed minus 3. And then du, we'll look for that extra portion that's floating around, which looks like x squared dx is that extra stuff that's floating around. So let's see what we can do here. Uh, we're going to take the derivative of u, and that gives us 3x squared dx. That looks pretty close to what we have floating around, but we do have a 3 in, on the right side that's not included in the extra portion. So let's go ahead and divide both sides by 3, or multiply by 1 third. So 1 third du is equal to x squared dx. And this right side now matches so the extra stuff that's floating around with x in it, so we can replace that with 1 third du. So at the bottom we have u, and then we are replacing, remember we're replacing all of that with one third du. And of course we can't leave the top of our fraction empty, so I'm going to put a one there. And I'm going to go ahead and bring out the one third, that constant, out front of the integration symbol. And then we're going to integrate one over u du. So we did the substitution. Um, now I'm going to actually integrate it. And we know that when we integrate one over u, that that would be one ln of u. That's the antiderivative for 1 over u. And then we're going to bring down that constant that we brought out to the front of the integration symbol. And don't forget our plus c. I'm going to go back to the original variable x that was used. So I'm going to replace u with what we originally let u equal, and that was the x cubed minus 3. So we're going to put x cubed minus 3 right there as the input on that ln function. Alright, for number 17. We want to figure out what are we going to let be u. Um, before we do that, let's write this a little bit differently. Um, keep in mind that this is the same thing as e to the negative 1 over x power times. Notice that the x squared is at the bottom of the fraction, so that's the same thing as 1 over x squared times dx. And what we said was um, we're trying to let e u represent the most complicated part of the expression, or we could also look for the exponent for e, if it's anything other than just x. That's another clue to look for. So let's let u equal negative 1 over x. Okay. So I'm going to rewrite this here as e to the u power, and then we have this extra stuff floating around right here. Okay, so let's see what we can do here. Let's find the derivative of u. And that's the negative 1 over x. Um, so let's actually write that a little differently before we actually take the derivative of that. Let's write that as negative 1 times x to the negative 1 power. So we'll bring that x to the top of the fraction. And that makes it really easy to use the power rule to take the derivative. So we're going to multiply the negative 1 times negative 1. So we'll bring down the power, multiply it times what's out front. So it gives me a positive 1 times x. And then we're going to reduce the power by 1 so we get negative 2 dx. Of course, this is the same thing as 1 over x to the positive 2 power dx. And of course, this matches the extra that we have floating around. So we can replace the extra simply with du. That is really nice, because now when we go to integrate, 
the derivative of e to the u is just e to the u plus c. And the last thing that we want to do is go back to using the original variable, so that was x. So that would be e to some power plus c in the original exponent. The original value for u was really negative 1 over x. So I'm going to write that as e to the negative 1 over x power plus c.